one word, friendship. That's exactly the word I'd use to describe what SAW Wrestling really meant. Um, it was a great stepping stone for a lot of you know the superstars you see today. SAW was three of us, good friends back when we were little. You know, doing what we used to watch wrestling all the time and going out and doing what we liked. I mean, just having family, friends getting together, having a good time. Friendship. Being able, being able to hang out with your friends. Put all our other worries behind us, and uh, when school is out, or on our weekends off of school, it was a chance for all of us to get together and uh, enjoy what we love doing, what we love to watch, and that was um, professional wrestling. One day, um, myself and uh, Mick and Bodyguard got the idea that we were going to go out and, and buy a trampoline and basically use that as a, a, res a wrestling ring. So when uh, I was in uh, high school and uh, instead of doing my work, I was drawing comic books of me and Pride and Bodyguard and as well as wrestling. Um, actually, ended up being Bodyguard's dad that went out and bought the trampoline for us. I'm pretty sure he thought we were going to use it to just to jump on and have fun on, but we ended up using it for the for our wrestling ring for SAW. Oh, jeez. The bodyguard's one mean mofo, let me tell you. And then, you know, us three started, we always wore masks and beat up people. And we got more people, our friends from school, started coming and joining us. And then it came, I probably had like eight or nine people on the roster. And Pretty much just went from there. Uh, we'd wake up every morning at about 9 or 10 o'clock a.m. Um, it was like I said, it was the summertime, so it was really, really hot outside. And so we'd get up early so that it wouldn't be so hot when we were outside. Get the camera recorder out, go outside, and uh, we would record shows. This concludes our Cablecast day. Cablecast hours are, but not limited to, Monday and Thursday. We saw that they were running um, programs on public access TV, so I got the idea of getting a hold of them and seeing if they'd be interested in putting SAW on. Public access was pretty sweet because we'd be going down and to the public access place and putting our own tapes in there, doing it all ourselves. and. I mean, we'd be walking down the street to go and like come and go or something, and people would be driving by. Hey, saw you on public access. Getting the popularity out there, just seeing my face on TV is just a great inspiration to me. When I was younger, when they first started, because I was doing my own thing with my buddies and WWW. We had old ladies and uh, people calling in, wanting us removed from air, basically because they thought that what we were doing was wrong and that. Muscatine was basically saying it was okay for kids to go out and beat up each other and uh, throw each other off trampolines. And by popular demand, we came back. Rogan. Why Thunder? Oh, oh. First appearance with uh, SA Dub to a place called Bowers Arena. Quite an interesting little alley. Arena, I guess you could call it. You know, there's one dirt road going right by. The W Arena was sweet. It was Pride's backyard and had the trampoline in between the house and the house and the garage. So it was a nice little tight spot. Down at uh, Dorothy's, just the big wide open area, flaming tables. I always had my mom out inside the front row, always doing me, but I loved it. It was uh, Bodyguard versus Jason Terrible. They used all the junk that was in the back, literally junk, trash can, or you know, washing machines, cars, whatever we could find back there. Rotted booba um, back there. It was disgusting.
Okay, I was the one who put him out of commission. I don't know what you're doing here talking about all this stuff in your new hardcore championship. Yo, it's muy bueno en la clase. Eh, es muy white thunder. And I'm standing in his house. Oh, it spits right in his... Oh, it cracked the glass right over the head of Mick Wick. Yeah, there's a nail right on the table. And I'm going to go up under the ropes again. Up. Move and, uh, back over. And, and a close. close. Jason Terrible, there he is. There's Jason the Terrible. Not, not on the outside. Oh, oh my. my. It's going to hit Wicked. He's going to hit Mick. He hit Mr. Extreme. He hit Mr. Extreme, Mick Wick. Oh. oh. Got him. Boom! Boom! Oh. To the outside. Rich, oh. oh my curry. Good dog. Here comes the. Oh, Super Clash 99, May 18th. It's gonna be me, Bodyguard, in Vegas. But heavyweight title, and I'm just going to do whatever it takes for that heavyweight title. I don't care. One word to describe Mick Wicked? Crazy. One word, extreme. You can take a beating and still come back, but, and drinks a lot of beer, but that's Kevin. Mick Wicked. Crazy. SAW, he was the one that, if you wanted to see a hardcore match, he was always in it, and uh, the fans would come to see him because they knew that when they came, if Mick Wicked was there, he was going to do something nuts. Mr. Extreme Mick Wicked, uh, I came up with that when I was drawing the comics. It's Mick Foley, which I was idolizing. So first Mick, and then Wicked was a song Corn came out with. I was it from the first thumbtacks I ever did, but we, we thought it'd be a good idea to light them on fire. Or light the table on fire, not thinking they would be red hot. Yeah. Mick has done some of the craziest stuff you'll see out there. Uh, Mick Wicked always gave the fans a show. You think you're tough because you're going to injure my arm? Because last week at EWA, Tuesday Night Extreme, you injured his arm pretty bad. I had a cert, not surgery, but I had something <laughs> surge. It was live match, White Thunder. You're gonna get yours by the freak. White track. Best friend, been friends since second grade. And just being around him is just a great guy. He supported me. He got me where I was today. And he's just been a great friend to everybody. And he's a great leader. He's like the Vince McMahon of ACW. Oh, my. Whoa, he hip-tossed him, right? The name Mike Pride came from one day I just decided I didn't want to use my old name, my, my own name anymore because it was just, wasn't really catchy. Really good guy. Probably, I was just, the guy was like my best friend. First guy I I called when my mother passed away. And the guy was literally there, probably in less than a minute at the hospital. It means a lot to me. Those guys, good guys, best friends. Paul Bears for my mom. Always there when you need them. Now, Mike. Mike Pride, he's got he's got a future ahead of him, and you know you're gonna have to keep your eyes on these guys. I love to give the fans what they deserve. Fucking loud about him and the coward, the coward, the coward king. I had just enough of this fucking shit. Fuck it out. Fuck you. Everybody can get 
Never once did you could you tell he was in pain. He's always smiling. You know, choke him out, he's always smiling. Knock him out with a chair, still smiling. Um, the hedge interview was classic. Him falling off the trampoline was just hilarious. Scoop slammed himself over the trampoline and landed on his back. <laughs> that was good. But yeah, he usually always made us laugh pretty good. He likes to fall down a lot. Then he fell down that hill and And of course him coming out like a big badass and then falling down the the hill in the woods area there at one of the SW shows was just absolutely a classic moment, hilarious, um, one that I can watch over and over again and just constantly laugh about it. Now that's a character. I'd say the funniest thing is when he was dancing and he was falling through the freaking table. And I love Tim Day when you first meet him, a little quiet guy. But once again, another guy that's there for you when you need him. Oh, the, the bodyguard! <laughs>
Jordan's a big guy, he always tried his hardest. And uh, we moved the SW Arena to his mom's backyard. When he was on his hot streak, he was phenomenal. Destroyer was just a great wrestler. His personality was great. Love wrestling. Love doing it. Love being a part of it. Love everything about wrestling. Just this is what I want to do forever. <laughs>
it was brought to my attention that, hey, we're going to start MXWA. We decided to actually start renting a ring from IPW, and, and that's how it turned into MXWA. I guess to change the name and to become more professional. Now that was really intimidating, being indoors in a ring. Bigger crowd, huge crowd, very first show. I was in the very first match against White Thunder. People didn't want to see, you know, a bunch of backyard wrestlers, you know. They, they wanted to see a show, so we decided that we were going to go out and rent a ring, which I did with uh, Impact Pro Wrestling. And I read out the Fiesta Hall, talked to them, and the next thing you know, SID, or MXWA was born, and the rest is just history. But uh, I'm definitely proud of uh, what happened with Saw because I was there to see the evolution into MXWA. SAW was a good part of our, my life and kept us out of trouble for until I was at least 17, 18. And from there on, got to let us do what we love to do and make our friendships all closer. It has to be, you know, if there was supposed to be a reunion or something of SAW to, for one night only, I would be privileged to come back and wrestle under Crow's name, be in the same outfit, everything. And I think it would bring back so much memories. Greatest time in my life, literally, S A B has been the greatest time in my life. Just hanging out with friends, no cares in the world, just having fun, hanging out, doing what we love to do. One word, friendship. That's exactly the word I'd use to describe what SAW wrestling really meant. SAW basically to us and to myself meant put all our other worries behind us and uh, when school was out or on our weekends off of school it was a chance for all of us to get together and uh, enjoy what we love doing what we love to watch and that was um, professional wrestling it was kind of a, a way to express what we wanted to do in life and to be able to live our dream even if it was just you know as a backyard wrestling company or crew whatever you want to call us it was a chance for us to um, be able to call ourselves you know professional wrestlers in our own mind.